Hey guys, this is Hardware Hobbyist again. I'm Max. And this is Bill. Alright, so this video is going to be our third video in the unboxing section of our custom PC building guide. And it's going to cover the CPU heatsink. The one we have here is the Prolimatec Mega Halon Revision B. And again, this is used because we traded for it on the forum, so it's nice to get um, something for free like that because I wasn't going to use the radiator that I traded it for. So let's open it here. If I can remember where to open it from. The top. Alright. So this heatsink is pretty bulky, as you guys are going to see. So again, um, before you go out and buy it, just make sure that it will fit in your case. So the width of um, the computer case that you're going to be buying. In most cases, we'll show kind of the maximum height that um, they'll allow for a CPU heatsink to fit. Alright, so here's all the mounting equipment. Um, down in the box is thermal paste. Uh -huh. So, um, back plate with a bunch of different sizes for different motherboard sockets. So, we're going to be using the 1366 sockets. Um, here are the fan clips. Um, we're going to talk more about this later, but we're going to be doing a push pull configuration. So, we definitely need the this comes along with. Thermal paste, um, I'll talk a little bit about this um, once we take a look at the actual heatsink. Alright, here's more of the mounting equipment, and um, here's the instruction manual, which is extremely imperative when you're mounting any CPU heatsink. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to um, look over this stuff. We might do an installation guide, um, but in general, if you just read this and take it step by step, you should be good to go. Alright, here's the actual heatsink itself. As you can see, it is very large. It's pretty tall too, so you definitely want to make sure your case can hold it. And if you can see here, there are six heat pipes, which go down through these towers and into the actual block and then up through the next one. So um, this heat sink was uh, pretty famous back when um, the Nehalem processors came out. <laughs> yep. So hopefully it'll suit our purposes really well and give us great cooling. Mm -hmm. Um. Again, what you want to look for in a heat sink is basically, I mean, heat pipes. This is using um, HDT heat pipe. Well, it's using heat pipe technology, which is basically, um, it's got a gas in these heat pipes. So basically when the heat from the CPU dissipates through the block, um, it makes the gas heat up, which then um, rises, you know, and through the fins and basically dissipates and then um, condenses back down and repeats. A uh, quick thing is um, notice these all these fan um, what would you call these what? blades? The fins. Yeah, basically the fins. Um, in terms of cooling, you want to have the maximum surface area. So um, that's why in this case you see there's just so there's you know a ton of fins um, thinly spaced out just for maximum cooling purposes. And of course the bottom you want it um, basically as smooth as possible for optimum covering of um, the CPU and what's actually going to help that is a good thermal compound. Um, in this case here is um, the thermal compound that comes along with the heat sink. Um, not the best if you're looking for um, you know extreme performance we recommend stuff like uh, like we used in the previous video Innovation Cooling's um, Icy Diamond which is really um, because again uh, while, you know, the surface may appear to be extremely flat, um, there are a little grooves, and to fill in those grooves, you need some sort of um, paste or compound between the CPU and the heat sink for optimal um, thermal dissipation. And when you're selecting your CPU heat sink, um, or if you're just using the stock ones, which is fine for a lot of uh, newer processors that run cool if you're not planning on doing heavy overclocking, but if you want to um, look at reviews, there are tons of reviews online where um, people have tested uh, plenty of different heat sinks and they have all the temperatures there. So um, there's no lack of, of uh, resources that you can use to look up and plan what you want to get. Okay, so in our build we're actually going to be using something um, pretty cool. We're going to be using a, something called a push-pull fan configuration. So that's why I mentioned that these fan clips would be pretty handy. So what push pull is is basically you you're gonna have um, two fans. Make sure you, of course you know your case okay. is big enough. 
you know, to have space for this. But um, push pull is basically two fans. One of them is going to be on. Well, basically, both of them are going to be running, and you're going to have double the airflow passing through um, the heat sink. So you have your fans face the same way, and then you're just going to stick them on either side. So basically, you're going to be um, pushing air through here and then pulling air out the other side. And it's going to give you a lot more airflow while not increasing your noise level very much. And um, But keep in mind uh, where your RAM is going to be because sometimes if you have an extra fan on the side this can overlap with the RAM sockets and it might block them. But for our motherboard this will work perfectly and um, it should greatly reduce our temperatures while uh, keeping the noise level down. Okay, so that concludes our unboxing of the Prolimitech Mega Halum. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, Mega Halum. Mega Halums or version B. Um, Prolimitech, um, great company. Um, they got a bunch of different heat sinks um, with some pretty cool names as well. So definitely check them out. Oh yeah, also check your compatibility. Make sure the one you're getting is compatible for the socket. This one's got holes. Um, Intel has done like different uh, lengths, but a lot of heat sink manufacturers will put like a little oval here and then you can adjust the length um, of the screws or the distances so it can uh, fit into any of Intel's modern sockets which would be the 775, um, 1156 or 1366. Uh -huh. um, another quick thing, again most CPUs will come with um, a stock heat sink. Uh, most Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs, I know, um, basically come with a standard um, kind of small heatsink. But if you're just going to be, you know, using your computer for regular purposes, not going to be overclocking it, that should be fine. They have you covered. But in our case, we're going to be doing some pretty hardcore overclocking, so we need something, um, you know, a little more extreme. Okay, so um, following this is going to be basically some tips on um, what heatsinks you want to buy. Hi guys, so um, quick thing, I know we've already kind of looked over what sites you want to go to but for computer parts, but um, again, there's a wealth of resources out there for especially CPU heat sinks with um, a lot of sites doing reviews, which um, Max and I will be doing as well with Hardware Obvious. So, you know, Prolimitech Super Mega Extreme Ultimate Pro Golden Edition heat sink. Like I said, Prolimitech has some pretty cool names for their products. So again, um, there's some really great reviews out here. Um, sites like what Frosty Tech, probably shouldn't be advertising them, um, and a lot of other enthusiast sites have really great reviews on um, all the heat sinks. So you definitely want to check those out before you buy. And again, make sure you check your compatibility. All right, hardware hobby stuff. Mm -hmm.